You see, we heard that part, so how about you tell the truth? That's what you want me to do. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Let's Survive Interviews. And uh, today I am joined by a guy that I first uh, got in contact with way back in 2012. Uh, this this guy is, you will recognize his voice <laughs> from and, and his performance capture from Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2. And so I'm speaking with the fantastic Steve J. Palmer. Uh, Welcome, Steve. Welcome to Let's Survive. Thanks, Patty. Thanks for having me. And man, do I feel fantastic sitting here quarantined in lovely Southern California during, uh, during this whole COVID-19 thing. And uh, it sucks. <laughs> so. It does. Exactly. That's why it that's part of why this... Honest, but. It's part of why yeah. I decided to call the channel <laughs> Let's Survive, was uh, just a little yeah. bit of positive encouragement. Let's get through this together. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, and, and I think the main thing to do, you can, and especially if you live here in the United States, you turn on your, your, your cable, news, uh, cable news station of choice. Uh, Dr. Fauci will get on. Uh, many people will get on. They'll spot what they know. And I think the most important thing to do during this time is turn on National Geographic or NPR and find out what all the apes and primates are doing. Because I know as soon as they start making nets, uh, they start either trying to sign or, or trying to get on horseback. By then, we, th by then it's okay to give up because we are done. <laughs> so that's, I think that's the important thing at this point. So until then, I mean, you're going to, everyone at home is drinking regardless. I know that for a fact. But yep. we really need to like pay attention to what the primates are doing because that's that's my litmus test. Very true. Uh, yeah, if Matt Reeves' movies have taught us anything, it's that uh, there will be an armed revolution of apes, and this is the perfect time for it. We're at our weakest. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, Steve, just a little okay. quick thing here that I, I'm going to say is that how I how I first came in contact with you was there was a a games website in Ireland called the Gaming Liberty, way, way back. It's no, it's no longer... Um, I remember, yeah. And Shane Willoughby, one of the guys who's involved in the Gaming Liberty, they held a competition for a bunch of signed Red Dead Redemption stuff. And I won that competition. Um, so even here, I have my, my Steve J. Palmer signed Bill Williamson cards from Red Dead 1. <laughs> oh, you got a fortune there. That's, that's, you can't find those anymore. Yeah, you can, still got them. I, yeah, uh, they're one of the few things that survived my, uh, I moved, I changed countries. I, I went to live in Malta in 2013, and they're one of the few, the few things that survived. But uh, I basically, after I, after that, I kind of got in contact with you to say thank you for all the, the stuff you would, you know, all the stuff that I'd won. And uh, you were just a really awesome guy. And I was like, oh, I'm glad I know this dude. Uh, it's great. Um, well, yeah, you are you are an awesome guy as well, and you and you sent me uh, a bottle of uh, of the Irishman. Yes, uh, yes, and I still have that bottle. It, it's on, I get, it's uh, sitting over there on oh, my wow. uh, uh, well, my bookshelf. I use it. It's my piggy bank. I put all my uh, quarters <laughs> still fit, but I put all my pennies and dimes in it. Nice. And, uh, uh, but I still have that. I still have that bottle. That's uh, and it still smells like a whiskey <laughs> inside. So when I, if I have to take change out uh, for stuff, my hand reeks of uh, of Irish whiskey, which is amazing. It's so, great. Yeah, it's like you're handing it to the person yeah. in the store, and they're just looking at you like, <laughs> "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, as like uh, as I said at the top of this, you are the voice of Bill Williamson in Red Dead One and Two, um, and I think Bill is the type of character that everybody loved to hate a little bit when they played the first game in particular. It was funny because we didn't really know him in the first game, but it was just because we were brought along with John, and John straight away kind of has that encounter with him at the the walls of the fort. Mm -hmm. You kind of you're like you as the player are led to believe you dislike this guy, but then when you get to go like get to play Red Dead Two, you realize that Bill is not as you know he's not as callous maybe as he seems. Like he does have his own moral code, his own ethics. They're just you. Well, you know better than I do. <laughs> 
Well, I like to say the writers knew better than anyone. You're as good as your writers allow you to be. And uh, they, uh, they did such an amazing job uh, with the Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, script and the overall story. Yeah. That uh, it's something that I worked on and off in secret for five years on. And we started back in January of 2014. And I just, I, as, as an actor, I went into what, what I got as Bill from the first game, but it really isn't, the, 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 there's a lot of, there's more questions floating around as to how and why than there are answers, but mm. being able to do a, a prequel and filling those gaps and really fleshing out, and certainly not just for me, but for all the, all the kind of like returning characters, um, we had so much fun. And I, uh, I, I tell this to a lot of people, but I, I remember the, the day I got the sides for one of the campfire scenes when you, it's the discussion with Micah and you find out mm. what Bill's real name is. And I remember that was a big thing in the day because I was going around and, and, and Rob Weedoff was there. And ben Davis was doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. And uh, it was in the morning where he's like eating breakfast. And we had like an hour to kill before he even started, uh, you know, shooting in the volume. And I was going through it and I was like, because <gasps> I would, I got it that day. And I went and I go, oh, look at this. And they all read it. And they're like, no way. And uh, it was just cool because it's like uh, John Wayne's, real name was Marion Morrison. So I, I assume that there's a, a, a Western kind of connection there, but it, it would, it, it really, it really plays off to the, the, the musical adage of how frustrated would a man be if he was the one, if he was the boy named Sue, you yeah. know, quote unquote. So that's, I was like, yeah, that would be, that's, that makes perfect sense. That's another reason there's a, there's a wild hair at Bill's ass about something to be <laughs> mad about or something to be embarrassed about to the point where he's so frustrated. But uh, it, it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, it certainly did as we went over it. And then it just became something that I embraced. And uh, no, I just, I, I had so much, uh, I, I adored uh, working with Bill and, and spending that time with him again. And, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's a character that, uh, is, is, you know, and here a bit and here, and even though I would not do the things he would do or end up doing, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things I can certainly sympathize and, and there's, yeah, there's correlations about someone who's frustrated or someone, uh, who may not be taken as seriously as they would like. Certainly, uh, Bill is a man with insecurities. And yeah. uh, as an actor, you know, you're lying if you say you don't have them. Um, <laughs> but you, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, he's just, he's just a great, he's just a great character. And I've, I've been nothing but blessed to uh, work on and off again with Rockstar the last 10 years and be able able to help create not just a, a, a very interesting uh, character, but overall uh, add to the machine that this thing that uh, that is Red Dead Redemption. And uh, it's it's certainly been the the high uh, one of the highlights is my uh, career as an actor uh, and just as a storyteller. Mm. So uh, it's can, been a lot of fun. Can I ask, when you were playing Bill in Red Dead Redemption, did you know the kind of backstory that he would have by the time we came around to Red Dead 2? Or were you kind of blank on that um, when you first played? I, I, well, I I think in a lot of ways, you know, I, I just had the, with the script they gave me and I, I had my own ideas of, I, I had my own ideas in my head of what I, what I thought at the time uh, that would make, Bill Tick. It certainly it took to, uh, by the time I started, you know, just working on Red Dead 2 and getting those, getting those sides and, and seeing the dialogue and, and understanding the story, uh, some of the things certainly changed, but there were, uh, and I can only speak it for myself mm. as an actor at the time, what I certainly, what I thought, 
Um, but I, I think that what I was able to, if, if I'm not talking in circles, this makes sense. There were certain kind of impulsive beats in my head of what I thought would set Bill off and make him the way he was. And, and I think it had to do with jealousy towards John and, and, and it pretty much understood that he was, he did consider John a brother, um, but he was jealous of John. And the specifics of why he was jealous in my head is like, is he jealous? Did, did he have feelings for Abigail? Mm. Did, uh, you know, what, what was he, what was he jealous of? And, uh, but I think the one thing that did remain is that he was jealous of John because, uh, of the direction of the majority of Dutch Vanderlyn's affection and admiration. Yeah. And, uh, that was always the thing. It's like, he adored Dutch, but he was never the marsher to Cindy. He was, he was, he feels like he was the, the Jan Brady and all this. <laughs> um, and I, that, that I could understand. So I think that was the one impulse. That was the one, uh, the one thing with the character that's, that stayed. Now that when you, when I got the sides and over the years working on Red Dead and, and things would get altered and changed and stuff, uh, it's the course still remained true, but there were specifics I could pull in. There's like, ah, there's a, ah, there's some layers to this. And I was like, oh, yeah. it's, it's not just this, it's this, but because of this, this happened and this happened. And I, and, and uh, as an actor, I was able to certainly uh, grow uh, with what Rockstar gave me and they, they gave me nothing but uh, incredible backstory and, and, and history uh, to work on. I mean, I, it's, uh, they, I'd let them take the lead as writers. And then once I get that as an actor, use what I can to, to uh, add to that canvas, add to that tapestry mm. uh, and do my job. But I, I think the, to answer your question, the one core thing that stayed before I knew Red Dead 2 was ever going to be yeah. in existence is that he was always fighting with John for, for, uh, for Dutch's approval, his attention, his admiration, his love. Uh, and, and that never, uh, that never faltered. That was the, that was the one, uh, true north that was the one constant uh it's, as far as the storytelling so it's, uh yeah. it's interesting because yeah definitely the, the feel i got from playing the game was that dutch was almost a father figure to so many of the people in the groups like he was the dad that they all wanted yeah. to tell them they were doing a good job and you know how how, how good they were um and as you say it kind of felt like he had his favorites uh which you know were, were John and uh, I, I think that as you can say you can see in Bill especially in Red Dead 2 you can see during those campfire sequences during the, the swamp mission you can see that yeah there is that it's actually kind of sad it's actually a little bit tragic because you can see that all he really wants is approval and to be taken as seriously as these other kind of more suave characters yeah. Um so yeah, I definitely identified with Bill a lot more in Red Dead 2 than the, because in the first game, as I say, we're brought to him as an kind of antagonist that we don't really know yet. Uh, and we can even see that yeah. John is is not too comfortable about the idea of having to take him down uh, because again, they did have this relationship that we just didn't know about. But you're pushed along with as the player with that character. So you're kind of like, well, I'm going to have to take this guy down. He's my first obstacle in my way. But uh, no, Red Dead 2 added a lot of layers uh, to that character and that performance. How did you get the job? Like, how did you... I mean, I know there's there's a very easy answer for this, usually with acting, uh, which is audition. But uh, I, I will, I'll tell you the story. Uh, uh, and I told it at panels, and, and uh, this, this, is, this is how this specifically went. It was, uh, it was just like maybe nine or so days, like a... a week and some extra days uh before christmas so it was like the week week or so uh before christmas december of 2008 and uh i was at another performing job uh it was a stage show and i was on the loading dock i was going to be done in uh like 10 or 15 minutes uh with that performance and I had time to check my phone and my, uh, my 
agent had called and they're, they're based out of West Hollywood. And, uh, my agent had said, Hey, listen, are you able to get down to Santa Monica, like in Santa, down by the beach in LA, that can be an hour drive depending on mm-hmm. traffic. And I was coming from like studio city. Can you get to Santa Monica within the hour? And I was like, no, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> no way. And it had just, and it was December. So it's like the LA Southern California rainy season. And like 15 my, uh, minutes prior to him calling, it just a wall of water. Was oh, down. Gosh. And, uh, and a week before Christmas. So people are still out trying to drive in the rain and do last minute Christmas shopping. So I'm like, Oh my God. There's like, no, he's like, look, this is a, uh, it's, it's down. And it was, uh, an area in Santa Monica called the, the third street promenade, which is a few blocks from the actual ocean. And they're shopping down there. Well, uh, the casting office at, uh, Kathy Knowles studio is down there. It's like, get to the Kathy Knowles casting office in Santa Monica within the hour. And I was like, all right, I, I, I'll, I'll, tr- I'll try. I don't know. He's like, just if you're late, you're late. I'll try to make a call. I know this is last minute, just the ASAP. I go, well, what's this for? He goes, it's for some Western video game. I was like, oh, that was it. They said Western video. I didn't know a company. That's all. It's a oh, wow. video game, something like a, like a Wild West video game. I was like, okay. Uh, and it's not that I wasn't excited about it, but I had a million other things going on. And it's also, it's like, okay, don't, don't wreck your Honda Accord into a ditch, <laughs> get, there, get there safely. So uh, I didn't leave, I had a phone call. Uh, I, I, I finished up and I, I was able to leave 20 minutes and I, I didn't get, I sped there in the rain and I'm surprised I wasn't pulled over and got a ticket, but I just, I just, Hit every green light uh, and and was able to uh, just avoid uh, uh, law enforcement, which was serendipity. So by, by the time I got by the time I got my car parked and it's pouring rain and I think I had a umbrella in my trunk, but it's one of the little cheap small ones that like <laughs> if I was the size of someone's grandmother, it would work. But it, you know, it only would. So I'm like holding it. But I got I got I got there. And uh, I was 15 or 16 minutes late, now, maybe more close to 20. I, there's, I wasn't going to make it on time, but I got there as quick as I could. Um, it didn't matter because the line was out the door and they were already an hour behind. So by that account, I was you were early. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, I could have I could have got some food or something. But uh, anyway, uh, so I was standing in line and I get umbrella and and. No, and and they didn't uh, know. Uh, there was nothing from my phone I could pull up as far as sides because they're like, don't worry, that, uh, they're going to have printed off, stapled, uh, physical copy sides when you get there. Don't worry. And I was like, oh, well, that helps. So I'm in this giant line, and I, I didn't know at the time. Probably made eight people ahead of me at the same time. Uh, both Benjamin Byron Davis and Rob Weedoff were in that group. Oh, uh, now I didn't know at the time other, but it was just I I was just there for an audition and uh we got there and uh it was just so packed in there we and they were just auditioning and I was just there's talking you know I was like well what are we reading for and, <laughs> and someone just who had been there a while they looked and they said don't worry about what you're reading for this thing supposedly has a lot of roles and there's a good chance to get cast. I go, well, geez, that's, I don't hear that a lot. That sounds <laughs> wonderful. So I was like, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to get the, so I, I, they gave me like three sets of sides and uh, I'm going and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. Uh, and another 20 minutes goes by. And I, I was, it, it wasn't anything complicated, but I was able to get off book for all three bits of sides and I'm running it and stuff. And uh, finally, when I, when I got into the room and the, the, the person running the camera, uh, they had all these prop ta- like uh, these prop tables, um, the fold out tables, uh, elongated, lined up, and they had all these Western props on. And I thought it was interesting because I was like, oh my God, we're using props? 
I was like, that's, that is a, usually a no, no in any like major film. You don't audition in costume. You don't bring props. Yeah. I was, it's like, I haven't auditioned with the props since like my senior year of high school when I did theater in high school. And I was laughing because nah, no, it's not, it's not, it's, we're doing it unconventionally. He's like, no, we, we want you to embrace this. And they had everything. They had uh, different hats. They had holsters. They had bandoliers. They had boots. If you want, and they're like, try stuff on. We want to see how you move. It was all about movement. Okay. And I was like, all right. So I got a bunch of stuff and they said, chairs up and they said that first side we want you to read it but uh we want to it we want to to hear what you do with the dialogue but we want to see your movement in all this so read this and this we put these two chairs that's a boulder in the desert you're being shot at and you're you're, you're ducking cover and you're going to move we want to see you crouch and move while you're doing the dialogue, and I was, I was and, and none of it was the Bill Williamson dialogue. It was more, more the um, some of the NPC characters, uh, you know, stuff like from what ended up being around Armadillo. And yeah. uh, I just I went and I had the beard I have now. My hair is my hair was like long and uh, uh, and I I just uh, I think at the time I I came up with a, a variation of what, what it, uh, the bill would sound like. And so I did all this stuff and, uh, and I was in there and then they brought me out and sat and then they brought me in to read with someone else. And I kind of did the same thing. They said, well, I put this hat on and carry this, you know, it's a prop bold action, but they're like, carry this and do that. And, uh, and, and they really watching how I, my mannerisms, how I moved. And I was like, all right. Um, and I was there like over an hour or so, and I was having, the, I was having fun. I said, well, I've never had this much fun at an audition and I, I can't remember. Uh, and they were like, yeah, we saw it. Thank you so much. And, uh, and then that was it. And then I, I think I ended up having the rest of the week off and uh, Christmas came, um, that I think, I think I went home, uh, to visit my folks in Florida like either at Christmas or right. And I stayed that I stayed in Florida till right after uh, new year's came back. And it was like, I think it was like the seventh or eighth of January, 2009. And I already moved on. I did a couple other auditions and uh, I got a call uh, from my agent. It's like, Steve, remember uh, before Christmas, I, I sent you down to Santa Monica in the rain for that last minute audition for that, that video game thing. I go, yeah, yeah. I go, I go, whatever happened to that? And nothing. I said, they never, I said, are, and I asked him, I said, oh, are they finally doing callbacks now? Or, you know, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, no, uh, no callbacks. He said, you, you booked the bad guy. Oh, no. And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, no call. It was just like, we did it. And a few weeks went by. I had forgotten about it. And then it was like, hey, remember that thing? You got it. And I was literally, I was like, no oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> so it was great, but I didn't, I didn't, um, I had never once heard anything Rockstar. I mean, I, I knew Rockstar did, I played GTA 5, but I didn't know yeah. the, uh, I didn't know the company that was doing this game. I just knew Western Video Game. It could have been, uh, it could have been a Nintendo thing. Yeah. I had no idea. So that was like January 8th or 9th, he made that call. Another two or three days went by and then I started getting an email and then like, and I would see the email and the, the logo and email rocks and I'm like, rock. Oh, <laughs> and then it just hit me as far as what it is. And then our, we, our first uh, rehearsal or redo was on January 19th. And it was, uh, it was myself. And this was, uh, uh, they're used to, they used to have in Santa Monica, uh, they used to have a, uh, Rockstar used to have a, a studio uh, uh, in Santa Monica, California. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and everything's done out of New York and elsewhere. But this, you know, this was 10 years, 10, 11 years ago. So uh, on January 19th of 2009 was my first day uh, as Bill Williamson. And in the studio, uh, it was myself. It was uh, Rob mm. Weedoff, John Marston, 
Uh, it was uh, Anthony DeLongis who played uh, Marshall Lee Johnson. Mm. Uh, it was Brad Carter and, and Frank Noon who played deputies uh, Jonah and Eli. And, and, the, uh, and all the actors, uh, we kind of, the, the, one of the first things we did is the opening uh, in the first Red Dead where he gets on the train and it's mm. the train ride. And uh, uh, a lot of people don't know this, so I'm going to tell you this now. In the opening scene of Red Dead Redemption, uh, with the opening credits, and that uh, the two the two older ladies are 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 gossiping about yeah, politics train. and Governor Nate Johns and John Singh in front of them, and and that's where you first see Bonnie McFarland and the 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 the, the preachers talking to the young girl Jenny, and you see Bonnie does it, but she kind of gets up. Well, um, uh, Kimber, Kimberly Erian, who played Bonnie had yet been cast and there was no one to be Bonnie. So I, I did the motion capture for Bonnie McFarland on the train at the beginning of Red Dead. That's me. Well, that answers a question so, I actually uh, had. Uh, I was going to ask you if there were any other characters that you did motion capture for beyond Bear Beliefs. And so that kind of answers that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Um, well, sometimes it's fun. Funny, but sometimes just because of scheduling, some uh, like ninety percent you see Bill Williamson, it, it's me. But there are a couple of days where um, uh, I was unable to be there, and they got uh, uh, sometimes they get someone in to do kind of background uh, movement. But it's like ninety nine percent of it, it, it's us. But uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a scene in the original Red Dead. It's during the mission. Um, Spare the rod, spoil the bandit. Mm. It's it's the uh, the mission at uh, Ridgewood Farms, and yeah. they, they they it's it's, it's his second second encounter with Bill after getting shot at the fort, and uh, they, they at the end of the gunfight, Bill gets away, but they capture Norman Deke. Well, uh, the actor who played Norman uh, James Carroll uh, couldn't be there that day, so that was me doing his motion capture and that and that's brad carter riding me bareback going you know squeal boy squeal <laughs> and uh we had to film that eight times because all one every one of us kept laughing and uh and we just because it looked you know when you got someone in body spandex with the ping pong balls and another guy with ping pong balls riding him it just looks like basically it looks like the scene in deliverance in the but in Tron, it looked very weird. And I remember Rob and Anthony just kept laughing. We all were laughing. It was just hysterical. But that was uh, that was me. Uh, oh. and, and like, uh, and, and can I just ask as well? Like, because I mean, I've I've uh, I've made two feature films to date. I've directed people in those. I, I've gotten used to directing people, but I I I can't imagine what it's like directing a motion capture performance. I imagine it's very similar. But then there's obviously a lot to be thought. You have to have, I imagine, both as an actor and as a director, you have to have an incredible imagination to be able to bring mm -hmm. those things to life. So just, yeah, I'd love to, that process, like, for you as an actor, and, and what was it like working with the director? Well, um, the, direct, the director of the, uh, in the volume for the, for the performance capture, uh, uh, in both my experience for Red Dead 1 and 2 was uh, Rod Edge. And Rod is just, uh, he is, he's a, a fantastic director and he knows, he knows how to get, he, he, he knew how to get the performance he needed out of each and every, uh, member of that cast. And his approach per, per actor was different. Um, but he, uh, I, 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 I I'll work with him, uh, Anytime there's an opportunity, um, he's just, just uh, he, he's just uh, a, a wonderful guy with a, a he's a great vision and he, mm. he, he pays attention to so much detail. And uh, every every time every working day with him, you know that you're 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 not going to finish until this is right. And I don't mind, you know doing something over and over and over until until he gets what he knows is right and and 
and he's never failed at that. So, you know, you talk about someone you work with that you, that you trust, uh, Rod Edge is certainly one of those people and, uh, uh, and, and great work came of it. I mean, it's mugged, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a gamer as much as I am a performer and, 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 and being able to, to play it and see it the way the fans do and step out of it. Then you, you, you can really know that it's like, I, this is something good. I'm very yeah. proud to be part of this. Um, and like, um, it's, I mean, it speaks for itself when you consider how well respected the series is in the video game world. And uh, beyond that, how many awards it's won. Like, it, you can tell that everybody that was behind the scenes on this was pushing for a greater vision. Uh, and so I really think there has to be major hats off to everyone involved for that. Yes, you're absolutely right. I think uh, where my thought was going is, is you know, with when it came when it comes to Rockstar and it certainly comes to the Red Dead franchise, um, you can't really you can't compare it to anything. Mm -hmm. And people are going to try. I mean, you know, what it's people are like, oh, you can't compare it, and someone's going like, well, I'm going to compare it because you know <laughs> what are you going to do? But and it's going to happen anyway. Uh, so you let the, you know, you let the people do that, but it's, it's, it's really, it's really in its own class. Mm. And that's not a, that, that is nothing, that is not any type of negative statement towards any other game that comes around the, the, the you know, the same time. God of War, an amazing game. Yeah. Last of Us, an amazing game. I like, I play the, the fallouts here. I like fallout. You yeah. know, every game has its, has its own niche. Place. It yeah. Its own, it has its own place. Own place. It's own tempo. And it's, it, 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 it hits its own moment. Mm. Um, but to me, when it comes to uh, like Red Dead Redemption, not just Red Dead 1 or Red Dead 2 mm. or Under the Nightmare, or if you want to break it down, the overall world that this enc it encompasses, it, there, there's, it, it, it's, it, it strikes a very unique chord and sometimes it's a delayed reaction because it's it uh as you know it's like especially when you play red dead 2 red dead 2 is a very slow burn oh yeah if you are used to if you are used to call of duty and you are used to just fast 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 um you'll play a game like red dead 2 and it's like god he's got a okay, I need this food, but it's taking forever to open that cover. He takes a breath and he takes the can. He looks at it. Is it expired? I don't, do I have enough of these? Do I have too many? No, it fits in my thing. Oh, a bar, you know, the, 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 the mechanics of the movement. It's got labor to it. Yeah. It's got labor, but that, yeah. but there's beauty in that. Because exactly. it's making you work for the moment. It's like the wild west it's like, oh, I, you know, it's like they, they, you can fast travel now and, and Red Dead 2 is like, that was, that was added and, and that's fine. But, it, you know, the first year of playing it, it's like, where are you? Oh, you're, you're up in Wapiti and where are you getting your roads? And that's going to rain soon. Um, you got a bit of a ride. You're going to get a ride. You're going to find that moose, but he's going to make a return and, you, and you'll shoot him and he'll go from three to two pelt. And then you can't use it, and you have to wait another six days before you see the next moose. And ah, this I, this guy wants help, but I'm gonna die. And my and there's a rock, and you go fall, and, <laughs> and then your horse is bleeding out, and you're like, I don't have any reviver. Oh, I don't well. like that horse. And then it, it's one of those things where it's like, oh my god. But the detail, the detail works tenfold when it comes into the story, the way things mm. are layered. Red Dead is, is is as slow as a burn, or it's it's a fast rush, depending on a, you, the player, want to yeah. play. There are people that will breeze through Red Dead Two and say, "You know what? I wasn't that interested in Bill because they didn't really go into his backstory." Yeah, like, well, <laughs> we actually did. Up, how many? It's like, oh, what what was the point of Molly and Karen? They just, <laughs> did you talk? Did you t did you talk to him? Did you yeah. go up and talk to him? At Did King? you do the missions with them? Oh, you like no? Yeah. You could, yeah, you could. You could, <laughs> you go. You can talk to any non-playable character in Red Dead Two as long as you have the time or you make the time. Mm. And eighty to ninety percent of the time, they're going to tell you the information you need to figure shit out. Yeah. If you 
take that time. But if you're like, I just want to go and shoot and I don't want to decide. But if that's your bread and butter, then that's your bread and butter. You're not going to get judged. That's a great thing about Red Dead 2. You play it how, how you however want. you want to play it. Yeah. And then there's people that breeze through it and they're like, eh. And that's fine. I, I, I can't make you see a, a narrative the way I see a narrative. But then they'll talk to someone else and someone's like, well, that's not the experience I had. Did you do this? Yeah. Like, I didn't know you could do that. Would you be willing to play it again? I'll play it again. I didn't know this. Take your time, play it again. And then they'll play it again. And they're like, I'm not even counting that first playthrough because I wasn't even, I had no idea. <laughs> and I'm like, that's okay. You're not going to be judged because that's how a game stands the test of time. It's this, it's this treasure trove. It's a chess that you'll always, I, I found, I found new dialogue. I, I did a playthrough last month. It was like my fifth or sixth overall playthrough. Because what else am I going to do? <laughs> and I played through it, and there was a bit of dialogue I discovered. I forgot I recorded. No and way. I laughed for 10 minutes straight. Because I was like, did I record that? That's hysterical. And it, it's around, I think it's around Clemens Point, and they're all around the fire, and the fire's crackling, and, sh and Sean's there, you know, and Sean... Sounds like he's like, uh, you know, if you look into a fire, you'll be able to to see or know what you were in a previous life. And Bill's just like poking, and Bill's like going to drink, and he's like a burnt stick, and just drinks. And and Sean is laughing, and I know that's Mick Melampy, the actor, mm. just laughing at the response. The way I said it, and I'm thinking. I, I think it's just the the it's hysterical. I'm thinking, <laughs> for sake. I don't even remember filming that. And I know that's my voice. And then I'm thinking, wait a minute. And then I start remembering. And then it's like, oh, that's right. And then I just remembered there's something else we filmed. I wondered if that's in there. And then if I didn't find it, I found it on YouTube and watch it. And it's a great scene. I'm like, there's so much stuff we yeah. did that's still buried deep in there that will get triggered by, and I'm like, that's worth, that's worth me playing, uh, playing through again to, to find that. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's so magical that a gaming system an engine was created that will slightly alter a story mm. the way when you go about it and, and it never quite gets boring because you're, you're peeling stuff away. And I, I think that's, revolutionary in the in modern storytelling and it's, i don't think anyone does it better than rockstar uh, i don't think so either and i mean one of the things for me about games is that if a game has a particular moment that like there's very few of these i would say there's maybe four or five that i can think of just one moment where i kind of say oh my god i'll remember that till the day i'm on my deathbed and for me i remember when i played red dead redemption one there was a moment where I was just out riding the fields and I crested a hill and there was a lightning storm going. And when I saw that moment, I was just like, I will remember this moment till my deathbed. Like, because it was the first time I felt in an open world game that it was alive, it was breathing, the, the weather was real. It wasn't just pre-scripted yeah. weather. Um, even there's a moment in Red Dead 1 where you're out in the wilds and I came across just a guy and his, he had his, his dead wife beside him and he just shoots himself in the head. And I'm just like, what was um, their backstory? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I love oh, those yeah, you, moments. You never, um, or you, there's times in both Red Dead 1 and 2, you can go to a, you can go to a campfire, start talking to a guy, and he'll start talking about Red Harlow and the events from Red Dead Revolver and, yeah. and, and encompass that. So it's just this wonderful universe where it's like there, there's so much, there's so much they can do. And as far as if, if there's any more, if there's any more stories to be told uh, out of that world with Red Dead, uh, yeah, who knows? I, we don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. I personally would love, and um, because I'm, I mean, the name of my channel is Let's Survive Petty Plays. I'm a big horror fanatic. I make horror movies. Uh, I loved Undead Nightmare for that exact purpose that it was a horror look at and plus I love horror westerns actually horror westerns in general are actually one of the subgenres I love most yeah. uh, so I would I, I think from a personal level I'd love to to re-enter that world and and see you know 
more of the horror. <laughs> Although it's saying that the actual game has enough horror beats as it is, um, because well, as in the traumatic stuff that happens in it, I have never, oh, yeah. I've never. Yeah, again, there's maybe two or three moments in gaming where I I've cried the way I did in Red Dead Two at certain points, and me and my friend Samantha, who's uh, an avid watcher of the show here. We were talking about this the other day and we, we were discussing a certain scene that I don't know if I should mention for spoiler, just in case. But uh, it's a scene where you have to euthanize something slash someone. And me and Samantha were like talking about how we were crying, uh, playing as Arthur in that, in that moment. And uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, I think, no, there's, a, there's some really tough moments in the, uh, in the game. And uh, yeah, it, it'll it'll slap it'll slap you around, um, mm. and and some of them are hidden. Some of them will never. Uh, some of those feels, as it were, will never will never uh, see the surface, depending on the player. Mm. Uh, certain things will be brought up in conversation. Uh, I don't want to bring them up in case someone might be just starting Red Dead, mm. uh, and I don't want to spoil it, but. Um, it's similar yeah, to no, they're, they're, one of the things that I would love to talk about, but I won't for spoiler's sake, is a plot within Red Dead 2 that I've never seen in any video game to date. Um, all I'll say is that like, without, tr without giving anything away, the journey that Arthur goes through in that game, I have never seen a video game tackle something like that. We'll say what happens to Arthur, he's progressed throughout the game. Uh, I, yeah. That hit me in a very specific way uh, that I don't think any other game has. Uh, no, no, and it, it um, you know, it's it's interesting, but uh, for most of us, just because of our age and 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 how the last ten years have gone, and it's about Monday, Monday marked the ten year anniversary of uh, the first game. Most of us, uh, up to this point. Played Red Dead One, and then played Red Dead Two. Mm. Now I know there's a few people out there, especially one, and um, uh, there. I don't know if you're familiar. I'll I'll I'll, I'll mention this other YouTuber uh, oh, on your fine. show here. Uh, there's a YouTuber, uh, and it's uh, her name's I believe her name's Tegan, but she, she goes uh, it's uh, lightweight gaming, mm. and. She started five months ago. She plays a few different games, but she had uh, she had never played either Red Dead game. She did a complete streaming, and I think it took her four or five months, and she played it to uh, I think almost one hundred percent to one hundred percent completion of Red Dead Two. Took a couple weeks off, and then now she's playing the original game. She's she's experiencing wow. the story chronologically. And I've been watching because I'm like, I, I've heard of I, people. I said, but I haven't seen a streamer yeah. who, who had no knowledge and is, and, and is being exposed to the story in the proper order. It's like the young kids now never seeing the Star Wars and yeah. starting with episode one, two, three, Rogue One, the, and, and just yeah. watching the thing, no matter whether you like what Ryan Johnson did or we could get in that whole thing, but it's like <laughs> let this person has let, let this person read the book in order. Yeah. Despite what we think, I just I may not agree with you, but I will never have the perspective you're about to have. Let them have that perspective, and it's like, what did you think? How did you? What did you conclude? Yeah. And she's able to do that, and and and, and you know, and, and so it's it's interesting. Uh, she, as of right now, that's that is the only like YouTube like uh, kind of reaction thing mm. that, uh, and I'm not one big on reaction videos, but I got into hers because it just it's like I I spent the last ten years being a part of of this franchise, and I've been doing all these conventions and talking about people, but most everybody played the original, then Undead then Nightmare, yeah. Go to Two, then they play. Then they play Red Dead Online, which is actually a prequel of two years to Red Dead 2. Yeah. So it's kind of like, I just find it amazing. So she's hitting a moment, and in and, and her YouTube now, uh, she uh, it, she's playing the original game, and she just, Irish just helped her get to Mexico. So she just 
She just oh, got to Mexico, moments. and Jose Gonzalez is uh, far away is playing, so and it's hitting her, but it's hitting her differently because of just in the last few months, she, she saw where John and Abigail came from, what Arthur and the relationship with Dutch and Bill and what all that means, and she's having this, this she's having an emotional experience that was so far deeper than any of us had mm. as uh, 10 years ago. I, I often say and, that I and wish, it's just amazing. It's a, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, go I, ahead. Go ahead. I often say that I wish I had one of those men in black, uh, mind eraser things because there's, there's times where I would love to be able to re-experience something from scratch and not remember everything about it. Uh, like, because, especially in situations like that, I've often thought about what would it be like, like when my daughter is older, my daughter is getting into games now. When she's older, I would love to watch her play Red Dead 2 and then Red Dead 1 and see mm-hmm. it that way. And so, yeah, as you say, it's it's an experience that we'll sadly never get to, to have, but it's one we can yeah. like watch and uh, appreciate. Basically, if you, if, you, if you had the power to erase all of Star Wars from your head, and then, like on a awesome 4K screen at home, get to watch everything in chronological order, and then you be the then you'll know it's like what really failed, mm, what exactly. what really succeeded, and and I think that that's uh, but that's a funny thing in when when you um, you can have the gamers aspect, but then you can have the the, the person. The, the artist in it or, or the, the, the person who had a, had a part in, you know, Helps you know and the only life. overall thing, my part's this big, but I, I, I lent, I lent what I could to the canvas and I just wonder, it's like, what, uh, you know, how, how is the storytelling? How is you, you, you do it, you do it because you want to tell a good story. You, you, you pray that the work you do is, is a narrative that grips someone, but, whether it's something something positive or something hurtful, and everyone's going to absorb it differently. But it even it definitely does, right? I started replaying, so right, I played Red Dead Two, and it's funny what you were saying earlier about I, I tried playing Red Dead Redemption Two a bunch of times when I first got it, and I think I was just so busy that I was like, I can't invest myself in this world right now, so I kept putting it on the back burner. But then when I finished, I think it was the Parish. I had some free time and I just sat down and I, I think I've pumped about 200 hours into Red Dead Redemption 2. And I went back and started replaying Red Dead Redemption 1 afterwards and it definitely changed my view of Red Dead Redemption 1. You know, when I met Bill at the fort, I suddenly thought about the Bill that I had met in Red Dead Redemption and all these little moments where you're talking with campfire and stuff. And it wasn't the same as when I first met him, as you say, 10 years ago. That, that was, I was so detached from yeah. Bill back then. Uh, but that's got to be a crazy experience for you as that character to see how he's almost retroactively grown. Uh, and also, very quickly, one thing that I find is oftentimes prequels don't feel like they have uh, consequences because we know, we, we know the outcome already. But I, I found that with Red Dead Redemption 2, not once did I think, oh, well, I know where this goes. I was just so... They handled the narrative so well in that with Dutch and his troop, you had no idea what was going to happen to us. No, no idea. Like, you had theories or speculation about, I think I know what's going to happen here. But for a prequel to kind of do that in such a way, whereas it, with Star Wars, we kind of straight away know how the prequels are going to end. We go, okay, well, we know exactly where Four takes off. But with Red Dead Redemption, the prequel feels like it doesn't it's still got agency and it's still got a panic about it of like, it still feels like everything could, everyone could go in the blink of an eye, <laughs> even though we know potentially the outcome. Yeah. No, but they, 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 they kept it very suspenseful and they kept it. Uh, yeah. You, you don't. Uh, and, and, and Red Dead 2 still leaves, even if you've already played Red Dead 1 and you know, I've already played. I played Red Dead One. I, I, I'm I'm a day into Red Dead Two. No idea what's going to happen. I mean, all right. I 
I've already met these members of the gang. Mm. I'm I'm pretty sure I can say these <laughs> handful are going to make it because they're so so they're going to be okay. This is this is and then they're going to be okay. I don't know how they're going to get out of out into where they are, but I know that they're they're going to get through this. But I want to know how they get through it. And I've just been introduced. Well, who's this? Who's this? Well, I didn't see them. And well, something's going to happen to them. Yeah. Or is it? Who's this guy? And then you don't know because you're like, all right, just what the hell? And, uh, you know, and the dots, the dots will, uh, the dots will connect. But as far as this, this YouTuber that I'm, I've been fascinated watching is she's getting this whole fresh perspective. And to her, all the dots are connecting perfect. Mm. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. And the, I'm that to me, it's just like that's just further proof that Rockstar Games from day one they know what they're doing. Yeah, when telling a story, and I'm just I, I've been nothing but fortunate uh, to be part of that uh, to be part of that storytelling process. I, I mean, I've been very I've been very fortunate. So, um, and one question that I had for you is, uh, I mean, you you've been on the convention circuit as well uh, with other members of the Red Dead uh, team, and uh, so, yes. I mean, I'm guessing you guys have formed like a, a good, you know, you, are you like the characters in the game now? Are you a little band of of uh, brothers or brothers and sisters uh, in Red Dead? We we are a very we are a very um, we are a very close knit uh, group of friends, and uh, we had we had a uh, not everyone could join, but usually once a week, if not twice, especially during this whole COVID uh, nineteen situation, uh, we do we do our own uh, cast group uh, uh, zooms. You know, we've we've brought you know it's like as many members of the gang. Um, usually the the ones that are always there, it's it's usually myself and Ben Davis, Rob, Roger, uh, as far as the gals, uh, uh, Sam and Joe and Kylie, uh, and that's uh, basically uh, Grimshaw, Mary Beth, and uh, and Karen. Mm. Uh, we've had uh, you know uh, Mia Davis plays Tilly; she'll sign in because some. Uh, you know, a lot of people are have families with kids, and it's it's uh, sometimes we'll we'll get kids running in the video, uh, and, and it, it's great. But we've had uh, we did a Zoom a few weeks ago, and uh, Jim Peary plays Angelo Bronte. Oh uh, wow! It what jumped on. It was late at night, so he's eating his steak dinner, and we're just <laughs> we're just chatting. But yeah, but it's funny because I also um, am close with guys from uh, the first Red Dead. Uh, game uh, i still talk to uh brad carter who played uh uh deputy jonah uh joe ackman who played the heroin uh, addicted professor mcdougall uh, <laughs> joe and i were in the si <laughs> joe joe and i worked together on stage we were uh part of the same theater company here in la uh neo theater ensemble and uh i've been in i've been in plays that joe's directed um and uh uh Joe and I have been uh, Joe and I have been friends for years. So uh, yeah, it's it's you know we we either Zoom or FaceTime uh, as much as we can. Um, I was doing convention. I, I was actually able uh, myself and uh, Penny O'Brien, who plays Molly O'Shea. That's fantastic. Uh, the two of the two of us were able to do a convention back in January, right before this whole COVID stuff. Would so we 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 uh, we actually got on a plane end of January, like right before things were like really hitting the news. But uh, uh, yeah, so in the last year, I'd done ten conventions. A uh, few of them I did by myself, but but most of them I was at least with one or two other uh, Red Dead members, or sometimes there'd be seven or eight of us. We've just through filming and through doing the conventions, we've we are a very, we've we become a very tight knit, uh, we've been a very tight knit group. I love this. And I just, I was, I was t talking on the phone earlier today with Roger, mm. um, you know, and I'm sure that, uh, someone will 
just sometime tonight, they'll be like, Hey, you guys want to zoom or, you know, let's, uh, or something, you know, just, uh, what's everybody doing? Cause we're, we're just, you know, we're trying to entertain ourselves for those of us who, uh, don't have kids. Yeah. Uh, we'll zoom and we'll talk to everyone else's kids or I'll talk to my, my sister and my niece in Florida, but we're, you know, just zoom is a great way to stay in touch with everybody. But, uh, yeah, the red dead cast, we at least, uh, if not just like we text each other, we're always texting like 18 times a day at, at least. But as far as like seeing each other, uh, our seeing our faces, we'll, we'll do at least, it, it seems like now we'll do like two zoom meetings a week. At That's least. So, cool so me. yeah, <laughs> we're, we're always, we're, we're close knit group. It reminds me a lot of like, as I say, when, when you make a film, a small independent film, like, like I've done in the past, you get so close because everybody's on set. Everybody gets tired at the same time. Everybody eats at the same time. Everybody becomes so close. Yeah. We call it a film family when, when we all work together. And then you see those people on subsequent shoots and you become so close uh, that most of the people that I've been chatting to, through, to throughout this process have been like my director of photography, actors I've worked with because, yeah, we, you become so attached to those people that you work with. Um, over such a long period of time, as you say, yeah. it's 10 years since Red Dead 1 came out and Red Dead 2 only came out two, two, two years ago? It'll be two years this October, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. that's an incredible, you know, time span that you guys, a lot of you have been working together for, you know, so, and then yeah, obviously yeah. new people coming in as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, I just love it. In my head, I have this idea of all of you on Zoom talking to each other, but all of the faces are your characters <laughs> from Red Dead. So <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, my beard, my beard has gotten where it's 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 a good it's a good uh, bill size, and uh, yeah, the more I look at it, I I do feel like I'm looking more like uh, I look more like uh, Bill. You stand over. You're wearing sometimes. Like the long sometimes Sometimes the anger, you know, will, will seek up and you just get that raise. It's like, you know, it's like, I went to the store today and there was a 90-year-old woman not wearing a mask and I wanted to, you know, and it's like, oh my God, what's happened? You know. <laughs> oh, and, imagine and, Bill uh, having to deal with social distancing. I don't think Bill would just, well, I suppose he does keep himself relatively social distance. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, how Bill would uh, a bolt action rifle away. <laughs> um, and then my question here has already been answered by you, which, which <laughs> what, what do you mean, wipe it down? <laughs> I don't wipe it anything. I ain't wiping nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to ask, are you a gamer yourself? But you've already kind of shown me that you are. Like, you've talked a lot about games that you've played and outside of even Red Dead. Um, so, uh, do you like horror games? Are they something that appeals to you or are you not a horror guy? Before my... my, uh, I need to go back to it. I was playing Fallout 4. Mm. And uh, right now, I've got... Uh, I just uh, did a digital download of... Uh, Sid Meier's Civilization VI, mm. which I love this Civilization games, but I'm trying to figure out the controlling because the new Civilization is so in-depth. I feel like I'm looking at some weird, like, I, I, like I'm in the Navy and these are secret <laughs> submarine plans. And it's like way, um, it's, it looks very complicated. And I think that they did it because like, I think around Civilization four and five, are very much to how Forge of Empires is now on the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, well, I think Forge of Empires copied what we were doing. And now it looks like, so we need to differentiate. So then I went um, and tried to play it. It, was, it just got too complicated. <laughs> so, but I need to, I need to, I'll get to it. Cause I, I like those games, but uh, I, uh, you know, I, I'm an open, I, I love the open world. I like, I like to do things in the order of which I want to do them. I like, like the fallout games, uh, with the creepy, the ambiance and the music and just, uh, 
go and I'm forced to like pick up every tin can because I want as much caps and money as I can. So you you overload your 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 backpack size, whatever, and you're just you can't walk. So everything's a slow walk and you don't have the thing where you can fast travel. So you just you're slow walking in this sad desk to this sad, desolate music where you're like, this is just so scary and depressing. It's, it's like the and, world right uh, now. <laughs> yeah. And I was playing Fallout 4 up until the beginning of March, and then this happened, and I, I was like, I can't, yeah. Fallout is not the game to be playing right now. <laughs> so that's when I started the new campaign of Red Dead 2, and I I breezed through it in four weeks, because I knew, you know, after a while, it's like, all right, yeah. I was here filming this thing, so I, I know what's going to happen, I know, <laughs> um, but I did it anyway, and now, now I'm like trying to do that. I'm trying to take, I, I do a little Forge of Empires on my phone, but right now I'm trying to, wow, I need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, either get back into drawing and painting. Uh, uh, I think I had some of your comic down. book I ideas. like doing a lot of Zoom. When I won that competition, yeah, I, think um, I, I think I got sent some of your comic book art, but I don't have it here with me. But yeah. Well, uh, I didn't draw, because I, I used to... Uh, I used to write yes, for yeah. uh, Atomic Basement, and uh, my artist, uh, Guy LeMay, who did the artwork for the books I was writing for, and he, he worked with, uh, did stuff for Image Comics and stuff, mm. uh, he did, he did uh, some, red, uh, some Red Dead artwork. Oh, very cool. his style, and I think we put those up, that was like 10 or so years ago, we put, or yeah. 2011 or so. We put those up, but uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I remember that was uh, uh, two so, titles uh, I wrote for for, for Atomic Basement Atomic Comics. Basements. It was uh, yeah. Ghost of Marco Dark and Z Blade Double X. Yes, two, those uh, were the two two yeah. comics. Yeah, yeah, um, and I yeah I I I'm trying to get back into writing. I'm trying to do. Uh, you know, sometimes it's a little limiting as far as our current situation. Um, mm. But if at the Saturday Night Live can finish their season strictly by doing making sketches from Zoom meetings <laughs> and to make them very funny, which I didn't know that was going to work, and they made that idea work, uh, I can certainly, uh, you know, I think we all can push ourselves to be creative uh, in this uncertain time. Uh, and it, yeah, it's. It sucks. We're all we're all going through this all across the world, mm. and uh, but it's a it's an opportunity, and it's a it, it's an opportunity uh, for us to be challenged. True, and, and to, that's to how, reconnect. I think that's how we have to take it as well. I think it's it's been interesting yeah. because uh, as much as we've been disconnected physically from people, I feel like I've never been more connected in how I've been reaching out to people and. I started playing games online again with my friends, which I was always so busy that I never, everyone would be like, oh, let's go play some games online. I was like, I'm too busy with the films. And uh, now we're playing games every week and we have so much fun. I'm like, okay, once this is all passed, I have to keep doing this because it's such a good outlet. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, well, that's the one thing I worry about. The one thing I worry about is as far as like, you know, this during this whole pandemic, this is a good time to, to maybe reconnect with those and, and I've always been close to my my parents. I'll mm. I'll call my dad every couple of days, uh, you know, and and I I know what my sister is doing, my niece, my mom, and you know, and and then you I, I've talked to old friends. I went to college, I did college theater with, and reconnected with them. But at some point, it's like you know, the, the, you do have to put a border, <laughs> you have to put a safety net on the reconnecting because it could be two in the morning and you've been you know just quarantine or just stuck in your apartment and then you had too much to drink and you're like <laughs> you know it's like what are you doing and like next thing is like i mean it I, I it's a pandemic and i should be i should be you know reach out and then, how you doing but it's like well don't don't start texting old girlfriends yeah there we i go. haven't That's done good that advice. That's but good someone advice. has someone has <laughs> uh I saw, we were talking i think we were talking to 
I, I saw a really go ahead, go ahead. I saw a really funny thing earlier actually it was about Zoom, which was uh, a guy complaining about using Zoom meetings. So they said that they I'll send you this this link afterwards actually. They said that they started holding their work meetings in Red Dead Redemption 2 online. Uh, I saw that. Someone said uh, someone sent that to me. Yeah, my friend uh, Barry yes. Fanny yeah, sent I think it the over. Was named, yeah. It was so entertaining to read. I saw that. <laughs> That's what we should have done, actually. We should have we should have done this meeting through Red Dead. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Well, yes. Uh but no, I I did see that and uh I was uh, I laughed. I thought that was pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, this is the this is the perfect time for people to to play. Exactly. Um I mean I, I started out this year writing a lot. Uh, I wrote a feature script and then I wrote two shorts. And so then by the time the quarantine rolled around, I was like, I'm not writing anymore. I'm sick to death of writing. I've been writing since the start of the year nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> so it, this channel became a, a way for me to get better at my editing, get better at, well, at public speaking, talking to people and uh, talking about stuff I love, games, horror, uh, all that stuff. So it's been, as you said, a nice little challenge. Uh, for myself. Oh yeah, no. It, yeah, that's what. That's how you have to treat it. You have to treat it as a. It's an. It's an opportunity to. Uh, to challenge yourself. Mm. If you don't, you're gonna go. You're gonna go nuts. Completely and, crazy. Uh, <laughs> and it, you know, I, I, I feel bad that I. Uh, I know some people were, before things got really bad, they left and went to whatever home state and they're quarantined with the family. Uh, and I had considered doing that. Uh, but my parents, right, my dad's going to be uh, 80. He's going to turn 80 next week. I was supposed to be home for that. And, mm -hmm. but I, I also think of the risks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're, they're in good health, but we don't know. We don't know what this thing can do. True. And the last thing I'm going to do is put my family at risk. So, um, you know, I'm just, I'm staying put here in LA and, and uh, I, 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 I feel safe for the most part in California because as the size that we are, as far as the overall numbers that we've had, considering we, we've, they've, they've actually done a good job managing. So, yeah, uh, they have. I mean, all I can do is, uh, sit here, take care of myself, wipe stuff down. If I, if I go groceries, always wear a mask when I leave my door mm. and, uh, and, and stay healthy here. You know, yes. I, I, I'm doing better trying to trying to be comfortable enough to go for walks. I kind of like walking at night or in the evening because because my neighborhood kind of clears out, and I'd rather just be by myself. That's just yeah. me. I'll um, be very similar. Uh, but you also you you uh, have to have healthy outlets. Try if, like when you go shopping, limit the junk food and buy some fruit and vegetables. If you want the bag of Doritos. Get the bag, but also get vitamins. Try to just keep your mind healthy. Pick up, read it, read. I've got old plays uh, yeah. and and scripts and books on my bookshelf. That uh, and my dad always tells me he's like, find a book, read, and turn off all your electronic stuff for a couple hours. And I think that that uh, that's that, that's very uh, nail on the head advice. Um, Definitely. And um, uh, I, I've started to do that myself again recently. I realized that I, I've always been an avid reader since I was a very young age. And literally, I realized that last year, 2019, I did not complete, start and complete a single book. And when I realized that, I made the commitment that in 2020, I would read a hell of a lot more again. And I've read, I think, four books since the start of the year. Uh, and like you say, just being able to put my phone down, screen down, away from me, silent, do not disturb, and just lose myself in this world, is uh, it's, it's something we could all do a little bit more, definitely. I'm starting to realize that now. And you are, and you are, you have obviously acted in stuff outside of Red Dead. Uh, you've been in, in TV shows, and you've been in stage plays, you've been a theater actor. Uh, so, uh, that's also an incredible thing. And I, I've often joked about it that someday when, when, I'm, when I'm a rich and famous director, I'm going to hire you to be in a movie. <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, listen, I, I, listen uh, when, 
when this, uh, I at this point, I will be, I will be, uh, uh, and we had talked on and off the last several years. I had always said because uh, I was, I was doing, uh, I was doing film reviews for, mm, uh, I remember, uh, yeah, for big star movies, so streaming for a while, and uh, and I enjoyed that, but I wanted to move on after a while. Um, but we, I think we had talked back at that, uh, back at that time. And I always said, it's like, if you ever got a script, you can always, always send it my way and let's look and, and talk. But you, I, I consider you a friend, Patty, and you were, uh, uh, I enjoyed our interviews back when the whole Red Dead thing started 10 years ago. Mm. And, uh, and it would be very cool. Uh, it would be very cool to uh, read one of your scripts and, and uh, we'll see. Well, hopefully if this thing can clear up, and, yeah. and it can't last forever. Exactly. Even though sometimes that's how it feels like it's doing. But uh, uh, I'm this is how I look at it. I I will be willing to work with uh, with anyone with a really creative idea after this. Um, yeah. I would just say I, I'm one of those people that I'm sure there's a bunch of screenwriters, there's playwriters, there's content creators that are. They always say, "Well, write about what you know." And there's a bunch of keyboard fanatics right now typing up a script involving you know what's going on with COVID-19 yeah this is the one thing I I don't know how many Hallmark movies are going to be about like love in the time of COVID-19 or 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 whatnot now as an actor if (laughs) if I'm auditioning and it's like it's a Hallmark movie about COVID-19 I know but Rob Schneider's in it and Meredith Baxter Bernie and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, oh, well, that's what's going to be. I don't know what the inter- entertainment, inter- entertainment industry is going to happen. I can't even talk. <laughs> uh, I don't, none of us know what's going to happen. But uh, I'm at this point where I just, uh, I think there'll be work when this is done. And uh, I'm just hoping that, no, I'm hoping everything is not COVID because we're living, everyone on the world is living in it. And you don't need a when, load of stuff. when entertainment gets back to being made, no one is going to want to watch anything about COVID. No, no one's going to give a crap. They're going to like stop, stop it. I don't want to see a COVID Christmas. You know, <laughs> peanuts COVID Christmas. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I just yeah, look this over the over the fence, flying at the. <laughs> <laughs> no no one wants actually the dark comedy guy in me wants to see that but no, no I, I, no one wants to see that so I, I have yeah there's there's going to be way too much of it but i have one last question for you which is just if you could meet bill williamson in the flesh what would you say to him like what what would what would you say to bill don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, I guess if I could meet Bill, uh, I've met parts of Bill, mm-hmm. just as me. You know, there, there, there are elements, uh, of course, yeah, that we share. I would say, but if we were separate individuals. Uh, and, and my meeting him, uh, could maybe, uh, have an effect. I, I would let him know that I, I don't, I would, I would, I would find a way to let him know that it's, it's okay to be who you are. I don't, th- I, I don't think you're dumb at all. And I think that you, I, I, I would have an inter- try to have an intervention with him. <laughs> I would, I would be like, Hey man. Do I know you? Yeah, you do. I'm just here. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I would, I, I don't know. I would just uh, let him know that he's not, he just, he needs a hug. I think so. And I think I'd bring him a pup. I think I'd bring him a puppy and a bottle of whiskey. Yes. And say, Hey man, I don't think you're dumb at all. I, 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 give, you know, I, th- I think a lot would have to be done. I am not a professional and I, last thing I want to do is try to, I would try, I would want to steer him and he needs professional help. 
Um, and yeah, I don't know. Would I get in trouble if I gave him bad advice? Yeah. Or as I say, he gave himself the bad advice. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, at what point does Steve end and Bill begin? Uh, Bill See, Patty, yeah. you're opening a Pandora's box <laughs> that I don't, you know. That's it. You'll never, yeah. this is a, if, I take a steak, <laughs> if I take a steak knife and I stab it through my hand, does Bill scream? Will Bill feel <laughs> A lot of existential questions come out of this. Yeah, a hundred percent. I, I think I think we have our answer that you would probably try to get in professional help. I like that answer though. I like that you would try to help Bill. Uh, I, I would uh, knowing basically knowing in the situations that you would find him in, uh, find out where he is and then wait off. You you got to pick your right moment. You can you kind of get a feeling of where he's. And then kind of he's up. So you kind of you want to get the water kind of even on the horizon. Not too then, over, not too it, drunk. Exactly. And just that's it. I think that's the one thing with Bill. And in the game, Uncle was able to do it. Sean was able to do it a few times. Uh is that uh sometimes Bill and Arthur was able to do it. Sometimes Bill needs to hear some things at a certain time. And when and in the game, when he did, when he got that reciprocation, he was genuinely appreciative. Mm. When Arthur would stick up for him. Yeah. You know, and, th and that mission where Lenny basically sticks up for him. Yeah. You know, where, you know, and, uh, uh, I don't like being called dumb and uncle, you know, you could argue it's like uncle might've been mocking him the whole time, but at the same time, it might've been a backhanded compliment, but Bill took it as something he, he needed to hear. Yeah. He was admitting his vulnerability. And when he got that feedback, which he thought was positive, he was like, thank you. Mm. I really needed that. And you could take it as like, Oh, what a dumbass!" Or It's like, Oh, wow. He, He's actually he, taking that feedback. He, on yeah, to, I, perhaps we, perhaps we are the dumbasses. Perhaps we are the boys. You know, but there's so much stuff. Like for anyone playing, uh, especially like we're saying, the people now who are playing Red Dead in chronological mm. order, you could really have an argument. Uh, how much John Marston's a hypocritical bastard. Mm -hmm. You really, really could. Also, uh, you could uh, all... You not could Rob Weedoff. I love Rob. <laughs> but for John, yeah. But think, I, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah. It's, it's like, if if you... Yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. There's still no. people that are just discovering the game, but we can talk privately. But there yeah. are... If you've played both games, and it doesn't matter which one you played first, you could you could look at John and say, you know what? Uh... uh when Bill's on top of Fort Mercer or whatever, it's, it's like, he's got a point. Mm -hmm. He's got a point. Yeah, Screw definitely. You, Screw you. Yeah. But even like that. Or he, Bill's an idiot. It doesn't. But people saying Bill is stupid <laughs> and Arthur's not, you could argue that Bill is in Red Dead Redemption 1 and Arthur's not. So <laughs> I'm not going to say any more than that, but... You know, Bill Bill makes it yeah, out of there. I, Bill makes it out of there. Bill is the dumb guy who doesn't always make it out of there. So he can't be that dumb. Broken clock, Patty. Uh, bro <laughs> broken clock. Uh, Steve, I um, is there anything you'd like to say uh, to the, the people that might be watching this? Uh, yes. There is. Um, for everyone who is in the comfort of their homes and they're into watching podcasts or Zoom casts like this, uh, you are doing the safe thing. This will pass. If you go outside, no matter what the density of the local township, the parish, the county, wherever you live, please wear a mask. Please wear a mask. 
Um, if everyone wears a mask, I know they're now comfortable. You don't have to wear one when you're in your own home, but if you're going to go out, just take the extra precaution so this that this ends. Um, I because it does exist. Um, it's going to affect some areas and whatnot more than others, but it's a risk anywhere. So be rather be safe than sorry, uh, because it's a lot easier in the long run to be over precautious and under precautious. Uh, keep playing. Uh, keep playing Red Dead. Yes. Uh, Take vitamins, try to go outside at least for an hour a day. Uh, try to find a safe way to do it, even if it's our, our immediate walk around the block. Uh, get out there. Um, and uh, know that everyone's going, everyone's got their own interpretation of their current frustrations with the whole COVID 19 thing, but know that we're all in this together. Um, and uh, we're all human. I've got just as my own insecurities and, and wonderings about what's going on as everyone else does. But, you know, I, I feel we feel OK. And uh, we talk to friends because we are looking for something to kind of escape the craziness. And uh, I uh, for all you fans who've reached out to me in the, uh, in the last couple months, especially the last few days uh, because of the Red Dead 10 year anniversary, people who were going to attend East Coast Comic Con and that got canceled. Uh, and we're sorry that the 12 of us cast members who were gonna go, we, we obviously, no one was gonna go, but you know, we, we're, we're, we're all there in spirit. We'll make up for it. We'll get through this. And uh, I just wanna say thank you to all the Red Dead fans out there um, because, uh, you guys are enjoying uh, something we part we partook in, partake, partook, and uh, I have thesaurus. That's the book I need to read. My, my language, I just my brain, my brain's just melting. This cap is keeping my brain uh, in. Um, but anyway, no, I'm just listen. I'm just happy that uh, there's a lot of love out there from the fans, and as much as they like to. Um, our work is bringing them joy, their excitement and appreciation. When I see them on social media, it, it, it gives me, it gives me hope. And it makes me, it's like, you guys are making me feel good. Uh, because this, you know, um, it, it's kind of a scary time and everyone can use it, their own version of the pick me up. And, uh, it's, it's appreciated, but uh, we're here for each other. And uh, I just, I just appreciate good friends and, uh, you know, uh, but if they want to know what I'm doing or stuff going on, all they have to do is go to my social media, Patty. Um, uh, my Instagram and Twitter handle are the same. Yeah. There you go. It's uh, at Steve underscore J underscore Palmer. You'll stick it up. Yeah. And just, uh, if you're not a friend with me, follow me and we, we I'll post artwork, I'll post fun stuff. And it's all about just having a good time and, and helping each other get through this crazy thing. You know, the Definitely. invisible monster cough that is exists out there. <laughs> and the, the thing is like, I'm going to quickly reach out to anybody watching this as well, because I do know that because this is a horror centric gaming page, that maybe there are some people who might watch this video who haven't necessarily played Red Dead. And um, even within my own friend circle, but now is the perfect time to do it. Like now is the time where if you're looking for a game that will last you a long time, that you can enjoy, you know, go for it. No, I'm just saying um, there are, uh, when it comes to Red Dead 2, with Red Dead 1, you had Undead Nightmare, mm. which is still holds up. It's I love it. Here, but it, it works perfectly. But there are... Uh, there are supernatural elements sprinkled with uh with red dead too yes uh, and especially during uh halloween on red dead online they are taking it to another so the new red dead if you haven't played it there are there are spooky elements uh especially when you're around saint Denis. i was just gonna say uh, so, yeah yeah, so I would say that uh, if if uh, if you start if you start playing Red Dead Two, 
get on your horse and start riding to the southeast around Rhodes and Saint Denis, and you're going to bump into things that you're like, okay, that's that's my bread and butter, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my jam. <laughs> so uh, there's Red Dead Two has something for everybody. Definitely. And, everybody. And, if you're like, you know what, I don't have the concentration to do main missions because this, I spend all day trying to get food and this person wasn't wearing a mask and I'm kind of stressed out and I just wanted to white noise my brain. You can go on Red Dead 2. You don't have to play any missions. Go into a saloon and you can play cart. You can, it's like you play online poker or blackjack and you can play it for hours and it's fun and you can just let your mind go. So there's, there's something for everybody when you play Red Dead 2. Also, even if you just want to, like, as you say, here in Ireland, we have a five kilometer limit on, on where we're allowed to go to exercise. If you are somebody that yeah. usually loves the great outdoors, I find that when I play Red Dead 2 now, I will often just play for two, two and a half hours. And all I'll have done in that time is wandered around the countryside, just looking at stuff, just being like, oh my God, look at that tree. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> like yeah. Taking photos with the PlayStation photo mode, like it's or, or clear out clear out your living room floor you're like i need exercise more and what you do is like all right i'm going to play for the next three hours but every time i'm on horseback and i get thrown because i trip on a rock that's that big and i go flying that's 20 push-ups you will be ripped oh, by the man. time you get to <laughs> chapter six you will be just muscle so do that it's like drinking games where you're like all right if I get if I get knocked off my horse or I I get uh, if my hat gets shot up, that's that's like eight sit ups. If I get, if I get knocked off my horse, fifty sit ups. Exactly. <laughs> you could, you could turn this into it's like move move over, Jane Fonda. I got the Red Dead workout going. You you can do it. Why not? Uh. Yeah. Steve, thank you so much for coming on and talking with me here on. Thank uh, you, my. <laughs> It's, it's been great. Uh, I think one of my fondest memories, just oh, of course. to quickly close this out, one of my fondest memories of playing the Red Dead games was when I was playing Red Dead 2 and I was in the swamps with Bill Williamson and me and you were chatting on Messenger on my phone and I'm just, I found it such a surreal moment. I'm sitting here talking to you and wandering around the swamps of basically what is like Louisiana, more or less with Bill Williamson. It was just such a surreal experience. Yeah. And I want to thank you for, there's so many people that yeah. wouldn't do that, wouldn't talk to some Irish lad just while he's playing the game. And it was, it really- Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, I, listen, uh, I, I, I love the Irish people. I worked with three of them on the game. Uh, they're all drunks. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. <laughs> no, we, we, uh, no, it's, it's been, you, you've been, you've been a big, uh, uh, you've been a friend and a big Red Dead proponent for the last 10 years, Patty. And, uh, you were one of the first people to interview me when, when the whole thing got up, we stayed in contact. Uh, you've been generous and, uh, uh, anything I was, I've told this to other people, but, and I'll say this to the fans is that if you never needed anything, all I'm a, I'm a text away. I'm a Facebook message away. That's uh, incredible. So, uh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank so. you so much, Steve. You've been absolutely wonderful. I'm going to give you all the tiny claps. So I don't. Oh, <laughs> no. There we go, guys. That was my interview with the fantastic Steve J. Palmer, who played Bill Williamson in Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. He was not only the voice actor for Bill, but he was the motion capture performance artist for Bill as well, and among other characters, including Bonnie McFarlane at the start of Red Dead 1. This uh, interview was just fantastic for me. I love Steve. He's a wonderful person. I'm so blessed that uh, I not only get to call him a friend, but that I'm a huge fan of his work and I dream of the day that I'll get to work with him on something myself. Uh, thank you so much for watching this interview. Uh, it was it was mind-blowing to me to hear some of the stories that uh, Steve had, such as how he got the gig as Bill. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed this, trust me when I say that we have some interviews coming up soon that are going to blow your freaking minds as well. Uh, this is not the end of this. There is so much more to come. And if you like this video, 
and you liked uh, seeing kind of an insight or behind the curtain a little bit of you know video game development then I urge you to stick around for what we're going to be doing next because uh, next week's uh, Let's Survive interviews is another cracker so please if you do like these I urge you to hit that subscribe button and stick around with us because not only are you getting um, these interview shows you're getting a bunch of let's plays every week some reviews our weekly news trailer reactions and god knows how much else that I can put myself through <laughs> um, thank you so much as always for checking out the episode and as I say at the end of every episode guys let's survive together no wait before I say let's survive together, I'm going to say a huge thank you to Steve J. Palmer for coming on and doing the show with me. It was an, it was incredible of him uh, to give his time up to me, uh, but I truly appreciate it and I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So with that out of the way, I'm going to say let's survive together, you guys, and peace out. <laughs> you implore me. You always were one for fancy words.